Cool Hand Podcast, something you got to deal with. Welcome back to the show. We're live in Philadelphia. Um, I had to tap in because I'm no fool. Um, one thing about <laughs> me, uh, the Cool Hand Podcast, is I ain't no goofy. Um, all your favorite rappers, all of your favorite rappers, probably excluding 50 Cent, tap into where whatever city they go to. Uh, shout out to the West Coast, Big U. Uh, you know, you got J Prince. You come to Philly, you got to tap in with somebody. <laughs> My strength in Philly is this man right here. So, uh, guest, can you please introduce yourself? How y'all doing, man? It's Jason, uh, a.k.a. Sonny. Uh, yeah, I'm from North Philly. That's it. Why He tried to make me the warden in Philadelphia. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, let me tell y'all something. We, we come to Philly. I tap in, I get right. <laughs> I say, you know, he, he said he opened us with, uh, he welcomed us with open arms, my wife and myself, right? And uh, he took us, he took us to a couple places, to a couple shops, mm-hmm. and everywhere that this man went, he was good. <laughs> his, his, his name was good and his, and his face was good. So it wasn't like he was ducking no smoke or wasn't no place that he couldn't go. He was running through the city, showing us spots that other people didn't know about. I feel like I'm at home now, thanks to this man here. So <laughs> you are home, man. Uh, uh, shout out, shout out to you. Uh, I, I will say we definitely do gotta go get cheesesteaks though. We still ain't do that. Or are you good? Geno's or Max's? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> y'all tourists, but y'all y'all with me. Y'all ain't tourists for real. We going to Del Sandro's or Chubby's. So or we'll go to a poppy store and get a cheesesteak. No, I ain't eating there. So, <laughs> so, so real Philadelphians don't we don't don't nobody. I mean, maybe the Italians. Other mm. than that, we ain't eating there. No Geno's or Pass. Y'all heard it here first. This is a Cool Hand Podcast exclusive. I'm a, <laughs> y- y- y'all don't, they don't really eat at Geno's or Max's. No. Now, I remember when Game and Beanie Siegel was beefing. Mm-hmm. Game went to, like, one of the two, and they said, all tourists go there. Yeah, you yeah. should have went to the other one. Either he went to Geno's, and they said, that's where Max is, where the real action's at. And they both or, tourist spots. Wow. No, Max's is solid. I will say, Max's is solid. Okay. Max's is confirmed solid. They solid. But Geno's and Pat's, I'm cool. Okay. All right. So, what what are the two places that we should go to? I usually go to Delisandro's at Chubby's. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's a little up near Maniunk almost. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they to me they the most solid in the city. All right. But like for regular Italian food, I go to any of the shops down South Philly. Got you. You heard it here first. So thank you, Sonny, for uh, for uh, you know. Letting us, you know, check in with you before we came to Philly, uh, where to go, where not to go. And uh, and this is the thing about Sonny. If you're looking on the, the camera here, and we've interviewed before, so we're just mm-hmm. kind of catching up, chopping it up here. But um, if you look at the man, he has uh, a great style, great mm-hmm. taste in clothes. You check out the hat. He got all the uh, the pins and buttons mm-hmm. and joints and all, all that stuff. Without him. He, don't leave home without him. We was uh, chopping it up, chopping it up about a sneaker game and things like that, and um, he was telling me some of the history about a couple of different brands, a high end brand and a more um, mainstream brand. Mm-hmm. So this is somebody who uh, who knows his stuff, <laughs> and even and, and this and I'm just keeping it real. You come on the Cool Hand Podcast, you get respect, and you're going to get your flowers. Appreciate this it. is like uh, you know baby drink champs. We give flowers on here. <laughs> Um, one thing that I'm gonna I'm gonna stamp you on is uh, your taste in music. Thank you, man. Now, back in the day, I used to listen to music and just kept up with everything new. Mm. This man has lapped me about five times. <laughs> Stop it. When it comes to the music, he lapped me about five times. I used to be on top of things. This man got it. On the dead homies, he got it. I'm stamping that. So um, there's something that I want to talk about. And before mm-hmm. we do that, we mentioned Drink Champs before. Right, My man right, right. told me he ain't never have no Martel I've a day never in his had life. Martel. This is Blue Swift. This is the Cool Hand Podcast. So we got to, I'm, I'm going to pour you up some real quick. Appreciate it. I ain't going to pour him up too much. But I'm going to say, excuse my facial expressions. Yeah. I 
<laughs> this is what we drink on the Cool Hand Podcast. Mm-hmm. We we are Martell drinkers. It burns. <laughs> Put your Hennessy in the trash, and no disrespect, we don't rock with Duce either. This is a Martell family. I'm not mad at it. Uh, you took us to a couple spots, yeah. um, and I ended up buying something from here. I'm going to show you all on the podcast Instagram. Mm-hmm. Follow the Cool Hand Podcast on Instagram. Um, but what is your history? It seemed like you have a real rapport with a couple of these shops. So mm-hmm. what's uh, what's your history with uh, some of these spots, and can you tell us about the places that you took us? Yeah, so a couple of spots I took y'all, and I didn't get a chance to take y'all to Atmos. Um, I want to say rest in peace to them because they about to shut down. R.I.P. Uh, rest in peace to them in Ubik. Uh, I've been going there since middle school, just about. Uh, but laps on the hammer, and then P's and Q's. I frequent there re- weekly, basically. Uh, a couple of my friends work in the shops. Um, they always have good stuff. Um, just talking to everybody in there, the the quality of the associates that they have in there. They always they're always attentive to you and what you're looking for in the shop. Always just trying to make you comfortable, you know. And it, you can tell it's not just because they're getting the paycheck. Like, they actually care about what they do in there. And, um, even down to the events that they uh, throw. Like, they're having their 11th year um, their 11 year anniversary next Saturday. Um, and I know that that's going to be a little crazy out there. It's, it's going to be mad support. But mm-hmm. it's always nice with what they got going on. Mm-hmm. And that was P's and Q's he's talking about. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, we went in there. I actually got a shirt from P's and Q's, which I'll uh, show y'all. But uh, speaking of which, and uh, shout out to P's and Q's celebrating 11 years mm-hmm. um, of being in business. Now, when you go on the P's and Q's website, uh, <laughs> one of the first things that you'll see on their home page is bull. <laughs> So how did that come about of, uh, you know, you modeling for them? So it's actually funny because it was my birthday. Um, I had just turned 24 and my boy Chris that works there, he usually works on Saturdays and whatnot. Uh, he hit me up out the blue like early in the morning. He was like, yo, what you doing today? I'm like, I have absolutely nothing planned. He was like, all right, you want to do a shoot for Carhartt with me um, later on this afternoon? And I'm like, uh, yeah. I get off at 3.30, I can hop right on the train, go downtown. He's like, all right, cool, bet. So we went and shot that at Penn University. Um, and he had them pictures back quick. Yeah. Quick. But, yeah, it turned out nice. I ain't had no cut. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was it was nice. It was, it was a good experience. I haven't, like, really modeled like that. I, I model here and there. I'm mm-hmm. usually behind the camera. Yeah. So it was a different experience, but it was fun. It was good, and I would most definitely do it again. Have people hit you up ever since then for? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and um, I got a couple things in the works. Okay. Okay. But uh, for the most part, I don't mind doing it, but I would rather be behind the camera. I got you. But yeah, it was like I said, it was fun. It was a nice experience for sure. So potential opportunity, you know. Yeah. You know, it starts out with somebody hitting hitting your <laughs> phone and, you know, to, you know, might be something else coming out of it. So that's what's up. And you definitely do some work in front of the ca- I mean, excuse me, behind the camera, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, we, sure. went, we went to another spot. And like I told you, like, he's good. The places we went, is, <laughs> his, his, he's good there. So what's uh, can you tell us a little bit about the second spot that we went to? Uh, so the second spot I took y'all to is Lapstone and Hammer. Um, I believe it's off of 13th in Chestnut. No, it's 12. I'm wrong. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I frequent in there every week. Um, a couple of my friends work in there as well. Shout out Trent. Uh, shout out me. Shout out my boy Greg. Uh, but, yeah, they, they've they definitely made me feel at home and made me feel like family in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I'll go in there. I won't even buy enough. I'll just go in there and talk for a couple of hours, just chill, because they ain't doing nothing for me. <laughs> But um, yeah, they got a lot of they got a lot of quality stuff in there. A lot of different brands that you you're not really gonna find anywhere else in the city. Um, and then on top of that, some of the coworkers they have their own brands in there as well. So it's a good mixture of a lot of different vibes, a lot of different frequencies going on. But it's all conclusive to what they got. 
Absolutely. It was a great spot. I'll, I'll speak to that. I wish, like, honestly, I wish I had a lot more money with me at the time because they had everything there. They had stuff from, mm-hmm. from New Era to Como de Garzon or, or to uh, uh, Margiela. To, they had everything there. They had a, everything there. Surprisingly, they just got Dime in there, too. And I've been <laughs> big on Dime for the past, like, two years online for, for i've never seen any of their work in the stores mm-hmm. so getting that in there was interesting yeah i was like it fits it fits the persona of the store as well though because they're they're very similar to like supreme yeah or like um what's another one i'm thinking about I, the hundreds like i remember yeah. there was like a, a like wave Stussy. of yeah, yeah like there was a wave of that in like 2010 to 2013 yeah. mm-hmm. um skateboard brands branching over into into uh streetwear yeah yeah i remember that was hot that was hot when i was like graduating mm-hmm. high school and everything so uh yeah shout out to them and like i can attest to seeing him just chopping it up with uh some of the people mm-hmm. who work there just on some cool stuff so um this man knows the city he knows the city that he lives in so mm-hmm. uh shout out to you shout out to philly too because uh you know, I, I I like I I like Philly. I was making jokes like, yeah, we shout, out, shout out Freeway, shout shout out Free Freeway. We was listening to Freeway, a little bit of Beanie Siegel, um, uh, and Leaf Ward, Leaf Ward. Wow, <laughs> this is like this is honestly Philly has a big history in hip hop and wow, battle rap. Um, those who know me know that I'm a battle rap fan. So uh, shout out to Philly. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to your work. Right behind the camera, um, something that you mentioned that you'd rather do. How has how have things been since the last time we spoke? I know we spoke about um, you doing things, having like a vintage lo-fi look to your uh, Mm -hmm. camera work, and you don't stop. Like I told you, he was the king of Instagram stories. He (laughs) keeps that up. So how have things been since the first time we spoke? Uh, they've been interesting. I think since then I've ran through like three or four cameras. Uh. And not to say I don't take good care of them, but they're older, uh, so it takes a little bit more time to uh, to really to really take care of them. For, for but I think uh, I haven't shot anything since like August, mid August. I get a new camera next weekend. I still don't remember the name of it yet, but uh, I'm excited to get it. Mm-hmm. Now, what's where do you see yourself going um, in the photography field? Um, granted, I want to do more work, more studio work than street work. Um, so I plan on doing that a lot more. I don't mind shooting for people um, more often than usual, making more time for it. Because a lot of people ask me all the time. I got you. But it's like I, I, I really don't have the time nor the focus to really do just that. Um, but I think I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna make more time for it. Um, but yeah, I plan on doing it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And you got your, like you said, uh, making time for things. It's difficult even, you know, finding that balance. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were chopping it up off camera about having a balance for things and how things can kind of, um, consume you. Mm -hmm. Um, how, what's, let's talk about that for a little bit in the realm of finding balance. Um, I do this. Right. Um, my wife paints. She does poetry. She does a lot of different creative things. Right. Um, you do photography. You're tapped in with, with the stores, maybe some modeling gigs. Mm-hmm. You are a curator of sorts. <laughs> um, and at the end of the day, we're all adults and we all have responsibilities. So uh, what's been your process in finding balance uh, in what you do? Well, like you said, um, as far as letting things consume me, if it's taking up a lot of my time outside of what I have to do regularly, um, and it's impeding on what I need to do, then I have to cut back on it. Um, so with photography, even though like I don't have a camera right now, I'm still going through my archives, looking at re-editing stuff because I am uh, somewhat of a perfectionist. If it's not the way that I, I need it to be, I'm going to make it what I need it to be to a degree. Um, but yeah, not letting it consume all of my time or take away from the more important things that I have going on. Um, you have to be able to find that balance or it will consume you and it will destroy what you got going on. Especially y'all perfectionists. Yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm saying this from a, a perspective of not being a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. So I've seen, I'm the type to be like, 
this is taking too much time. It is what it is. Yeah. I'm putting it out. Um, and I know. Go ahead. I I'm like that with some things, but with my work, like. I, I literally cannot operate like that. It has to be to my liking or else like it's so many pictures I have up on my on my photography page uh, that are there because they're perfect to me. But it's so many others in my archives that I will not see the will not let see the light of day because it's not how I would want it to be. Mm. And with with film photography, especially because I don't really do digital like that anymore. With film photography, you have to be really intentional with what you do, and and you have to know what you're doing. So it comes out in the way that you would think, because it's not like digital where you can see it right then and there. Mm -hmm. You have you have to be intentional with it. But when it comes out the way that you thought it would come out, it's no other feeling like it. So, um, and granted, I edit all of my film. But if it doesn't come out the way I want it to come out, I, I will not post it. I won't show anyone. So, yeah. So, I'm sure there's a lot of what other people might find as gems that you see as yeah. just not good enough. And that comes with being a perfectionist as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, y'all perfectionists. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think in terms of being a perfectionist, it comes from having a love mm -hmm. or rather – a deeper respect if it isn't a love for photography and certain things a deep respect for it that you want people to see it in its best light right i guess and um, at least what you perceive for it to be in its best light right right because i like i said i i deal with people who are like that um my, i think my wife's a perfectionist mm -hmm. of sorts <laughs> you're a perfectionist <laughs> you know if you're just finding out now well welcome to the podcast but um Another thing um, that I kind of want to, you know, touch on um, when you talk about you do more uh, film photography than mm -hmm. digital. And we might have touched on this in the past, but um, what is your experience with digital photography and why do you prefer one over the other? So digital is fine and you can do so many things with digital. You can you can shoot digital like it's film. It's not hard. Especially when you know what you're doing with the different presets and whatnot. But um it doesn't give you the same kind of satisfaction. It's more it's more like instant gratification with digital. Rather with film, it's like it's gradual. It's like you're getting it, but you're getting it in, in a it's it's forcing you to be more patient, you know? And I think that's helped me outside of photography as well. As far as like not expecting things to be perfect right then and there, um, but yeah, film film it gives you a different it gives you a different type of um, different type. I want to say happiness, <laughs> <laughs> but it definitely gives you a different form of fulfillment. Gotcha. You know? So yeah. So I know, for example, um, I want to spend a little bit more time uh, talking about that because mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, for myself, I wouldn't touch a film camera. Um, but I know how much work goes into it. I, I took a flick for somebody um, on their film camera, and I was just so confused. Mm -hmm. Just even looking, <laughs> looking into it and trying. He's like, "You just got to do this." I'm like, "You just gotta." You like, really have to learn your camera. Yeah. So, um, the process of learning a film camera um, versus a digital camera. Mm -hmm. What was that like? How long did it take for you to really get used to film? Um. So like I said, it really it really does. You have to learn your camera. It varies on which camera you have, mm -hmm. and the different. Um, let me give you an example. Like, I think my first camera was a, a Fujica uh, drop-in loader, and it was a point and shoot. But it's not like it wasn't something that you had to really be articulate with, you know. And then going from that, like you literally just put the film in, and you close it, and it automatically loads everything. Okay. But then I got a Pentax K, and everything shifted for me because it's all manual. It's not automatic. So you have to put it in. You have to stretch it out all the way across. Make sure it's in the slot. Then you have to wind it back up. Like, and granted, I hate doing all that. Yeah. I'd rather just get a drop and load it uh, automatic. But it definitely makes you appreciate it more. Cause when you mess up, <laughs> you mess you mess mm -hmm. up, and film is not cheap. Um, 
but Pentax is definitely like the Pentax K1000. It's definitely a great starter camera. Mm-hmm. It'll, it will it will make you learn. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or you will put that camera down. So you mentioned that dealing with the film camera, um, it taught you patience in dealing with uh, your camera, of course, but also outside yeah. of photography. If you are willing to share, um, yeah. in what sense did it help you with patience outside of um, photography? I think dealing with people as well, because I mean, you know, people people get on your nerves. It's, Facts. It's life. But realizing, one, that not everybody was raised like how you were. Not everybody has the level of patience that you might have. And I don't think I've always been a very impatient person, but in the last couple of years, it's definitely reared its head, it's especially during, like, the early early couple of months of COVID. Yeah. Everything was just, like, crazy. I mean, people thought the world was about to end. Still do. But, um... Yeah, as far as patience goes, it's definitely taught me to just just sit down. Cause even the process of getting your film back, you gotta go drop it off. Like I'm waiting for film now. Drop film off on Friday. Uh, I'll probably get it back tomorrow. <laughs> 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 my people, my people over at Photo Lounge, they work pretty fast and they handle my stuff with care. But uh, yeah, you really got you really just gotta wait and just check yourself sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. All right, well, good for you, you know. Uh, <laughs> not, not for, <laughs> I probably sounded sarcastic, but, like, if there's any way to learn, you know, uh, a quality such as uh, patience, things like that, because these are fundamental qualities yeah. um, that we need um, to reflect, uh, you know, the fruitages of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. things that are imperative to our, you know, personal spiritual development as well. Right. So, uh you know, whatever helps us, you know, to maintain these things, to develop these things, um, that's good for you. So uh, let's transition into uh, the music side of things. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned before, um, you are, you got it. <laughs> you, you got it. You got it. Even like, I felt like, a, a, what is the correct terminology I want to use? I felt like a dunce. I'll just say that. I felt like a dunce. He's chopping. We chop, it. We're chopping it up. You ever heard of woo woo woo? Oh, I ain't hear that song. I don't even... You ever heard of woo woo woo? Maybe, maybe on a commercial or something. <laughs> but dude knows so much music and he listens to so much music to a point where it's like, yeah, dog laughed at me several times. So, um, in regards to music, and I think with music, I've been able to um, be in a couple of settings where you curated the playlists. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> um, can you kind of talk about that? Because the first time we spoke, I'm not sure if uh, Pizzo had the first Castier pop-up gone yet. And I th I'm i not sure, but um, what I'm getting at is you curated the music at the Charlotte pop-up and yeah. also the Atlanta pop-up. So yeah, please let me please let me do my thing. <laughs> <laughs> he lets me off the hook for the, for, for the events. Uh, of course, you know. You gotta find all the clean versions and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But no, he he definitely uh, he lets me just go to work. He's like, bro, as long as you you make it a couple of hours, let it rock out. Um, so I just try mixing everything. Like my main playlist. Matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tell you how many hours that thing is. When we first, while he's finding that, when we first interviewed. Um, he sent me his playlist. And uh, now, to be fully transparent, um, I haven't looked at it in a while, but I see it updates. Right. Like, when, whenever a playlist updates, you know, because it, like, pops up at the top of your playlist uh, list that you have in your phone. So, um, yeah, how long is this playlist? Boy, that thing is 1,619 songs, 95 hours and four minutes. Four minutes. In four minutes. <laughs> So 95 hours and four minutes. 95 hours and four minutes. And the way it's set up, you, I mean, you could play it all the way through. It's not going to, it's still going to be almost shuffled, but you, you're you really supposed to shuffle it so you hear something different every single time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's whatever I'm listening to during that week is going to upload by the end of that week. It's yeah. going to be on there. So. 
Now, when it comes to curating um, settings, because, you know, whether you want to admit it or not, like you bring the vibes. Um, when we're in Charlotte, you hear the music going just in the background. Mm-hmm. Whether you're, you know, listening to the lyrics or just shopping around at the pop up, um, the music brings in a certain setting. So, what is your mindset when you are creating a playlist for a pop up or something like that? Um, it's a couple of things. One, they're not there for the music, but the music will definitely set the mood. Um, it's either going to make you calm, it's going to make you think about what you're buying. It's going to start a conversation. It's going to do something for you. Um, so, quite frankly, I really just try to find stuff that will, I want to say, garner a conversation. So, yeah, not nothing too crazy. Just um, making everything just calm. So, mm-hmm. And then knowing my audience as well. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a big thing, too, because, yeah. you know, you go to these pop-ups, and it's mainly people in their, you know, 20s to maybe early 30s i'm 29 so i ain't gonna say just 20s so i'm about to you know cross the threshold Mm -hmm. but um so yeah you're dealing with the with the crowd like that but the thing is um when i'm in these settings you know i'm hearing they say by common i'm Mm -hmm. hearing um i I forget the the first track off of the pray for haiti joint by uh mac homie um but then you also have another side now, if you go on this man's Instagram stories, you'll hear a lot of different music. You'll hear oldies. Mm-hmm. You'll hear um, Spanish music, like Brazil-type, jazz-type stuff. Mm-hmm. So how did you really get into um, – I think it's easy for younger people to get into oldies based off their parents. Yes. But how did you cross over into things like uh, different sectors of jazz? <sighs> It really, it like, it all starts with hip-hop. Hip-hop and then R&B music, for sure. Um, I definitely thank my grandparents and my, my pops um, for the R&B aspect of things. I think I more so went into hip-hop on my own at a certain point. But I think sampling is really what got me into different aspects of jazz, uh, other R&B. I, I'm going to say even gospel music. To a degree, uh, just being able to break down where the sample came from, the original song, what part of the song was chopped up. Because it, like, if you look at a lot of Alchemist music, mm-hmm. dude, he literally will take one little part of the song and make it the whole track, and it works. The loop is, it, it, it's like, I think it's a song, Midnight Oil, by him, Larry June, and Jay Worthy. Dude, he took two parts of that song. And I don't even, I still can't find the sample, but he took two parts of that song and, and made it perfect. Like, I haven't heard a better beat all year. And this is the difference, is what I'm talking about <laughs> earlier. From when I say lap, it isn't just a matter of listening to more music than somebody. It's going back. Now, I remember either you posted this or reposted this on um, your Instagram story. Mm-hmm. I pay attention. So it said something like, you know, we may listen to the same music, but I listen to music better. Yeah, I'm a hater. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm definitely a hater. No, 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 no. (laughs) Now, I'm I'm saying this because I'm keeping it real. It's not hate if it's true. As as WAC 100 says, the truth could never be considered disrespect. Now, Now, it may be a perspective thing. Like, you don't listen to music better than me, but there's a matter of listening to a certain song and saying, oh, I know this is sampled from such and such. Or you, you're listening to Alchemist or somebody else. And you're like, this is interesting. Let me see where the sample comes from. Right. Then you learn a whole new song just by that sample. There's no feeling like it. This is the difference that I'm talking about. <laughs> How do I follow that up? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. One more thing that I wanted to talk about, and I should have, you know, asked you about this a little earlier when we spoke on the fashion aspect of things. Mm-hmm. You have a particular style um, that isn't in one category. Mm-hmm. I'd put it that way. I've seen you in outfits that are kind of formal, um, like formal streetwear. I've, um, you know, see you in vintage things. How would you define your style? I don't want to say free flowing. That's a little crazy. <laughs> um, you wearing dresses and yeah, no, I ain't yeah. doing all that. I want to say I don't, I don't know, malleable, interchangeable. I don't know. I'll just wear what I like. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. As of late, I've definitely been on the 70s thing. The uh, flare pants and cowboy boots, low key. It's, it's been hitting for me. <laughs> it has that and then, um, what is it? I've always been heavy on cargo pants. I hate jeans. Mm. Hate jeans with a passion. I think I only own like three pairs. Really? What yeah. is it about jeans that you don't like? Comfortable. I, I can't you. move around in them like that. <laughs> but um, no, P has gifted me a pair of jeans a little while ago. I forget what brand they were, but they're perfect. Mm-hmm. He thrifted them. It was like fifteen dollars or something. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I just I just wear what I like. If I like it, I'm gonna grab it. It's Got you. Not nothing crazy. But oh, go ahead. My fault. Um, last point, definitely, definitely, I think I've developed the obsession with hiking boots. I love them to death. I really do. How long has this been going on? I've always liked them. Like you remember, you remember, like on old cartoons or old shows. Matter of fact, what was not? Is it Steve Irwin? The guy that the crocodile the, hunter. Yes, yeah. Yes, he used to wear hiking boots with his with his little um. What's it called? The, the tan safari yeah, suit and yeah. all that. I don't know why. That was always so cool to me. Mm. And even when you look at like the the um not coming attractions. See, you got me drinking and whatnot. <laughs> um shout out to Martel. Like the ads for, for things like Arcsterix or um I think it's Dion I can't say it. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to explain it. But even Prada has like a hiking boot out right now that's nice. I think it was like black and green. Stuff like that. I pay attention to older ads, and the way they presented things to you was just so fun and so cool and lively. It was just something that I liked, and even like coming home from school and seeing that you got the East Bay or the um, the Nike magazine that you can yeah. you can call up and buy out of. Dang, I kind of dated myself with that one. No, look, people, just a people our bit. age know but, East Bay, but they, they don't. They don't. They stop doing that. Yeah. Though. They stopped doing that like five years ago. Yeah, like like a part of me died. <laughs> R.I.P. East Bay. But yeah, all the, all that it's conclusive to what 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 I got going on these days. Uh, yeah. And the buttons. On the rent. Yeah. Yeah, the buttons. That's Lutter, what. Lutter pins. That's what I wanted to open with the buttons, the pins. Excuse me, because you got them on your hat, but you even got them on your shoes. I know we can't see this on camera, but I might take a yeah, picture of them and, and show it for uh, and put it on the screen. Mm-hmm. But you even got them on the on the tongue of his shoes. Yes, so uh, how did this? How did that come about? Because I remember pins were a trend at mm-hmm. a certain point in time. It was a trend in like, oh man. In the in the early 2010s, I'll say right. that, um, but they kind of died down. But clearly, pins are still alive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, how did your uh, pin obsession come about? Um, so when I was younger, I didn't wear a whole lot of hats. I think I got my first Chicago Bull snapback when I was like 12 or 13. I was the biggest Derek. Uh, oh my goodness! I almost said Derek Booker. <laughs> Derrick Rose? Yeah. That's the uh, Martell, y'all. I'm- dude. <laughs> <laughs> but I was the biggest Derrick Rose fan. I used to have a Derrick Rose pin. Mm-hmm. But, like, pins have always been, like, nice to me. Even, like, the little anime joints that they'll have at, like, the comic shop or stuff like that. It always intrigued me. So, uh, I have, like, I got, like, 150. Wow. But I always wear, like, at least 10 on one hat whenever I go out. Or like if I got it, like I got sambas on. I know y'all can't see them. It's if it's space, I'm gonna fill it. That's just yeah. Got you. Do you interchange? Um, my last question: Do you interchange the pins, or do you just have multiple pins? You keep them on a specific hat, or you just change them out because that requires work. It it does, and I always make time for it when I'm getting ready. But I do interchange my pins. Okay. Um, like I don't wear this hat a whole lot, but like where it's at. These these right here, these right here, and the B the B right here, mm-hmm. I wear that. Those are the three that I always have on the hat. It doesn't matter where I'm going. I always take those three off. I got his he my boy hooked me up. Mm-hmm. I got one for every hat. Yeah. <laughs> I keep them on there. But yeah, those three, I keep them. I keep them with me at all times. And usually the feather pin that's on my on my shoe as well. But yeah. Yeah, it does take time. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I got I got one specific one that I put on a hat. Mm-hmm. 
and it took a while to find the a good space to put it on. Right. And now you got a lot of hair. Yeah. My joint be low. That's part of why I haven't cut my hair yet. I know for a fact when I cut my hair, I'm not going to be able to fit none of my heads. And you're going to feel that pin on your scalp. This is true. That, like, yeah, gonna, I don't feel nothing. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I mean. Like, um, So it, it really does take work, and I could attest to that. Just putting on one, it's like put it on, try the hat on. No, nah, this don't work. Put it on another spot, try the hat on. Mm -hmm. No, this don't work. And then you, it ends up in a place that's inconvenient, taken away from the hat yeah. style. And so, if you do that, you got to wear it a certain way. Like, I don't got no fitted on, so I can't do it. My hair going to look crazy. <laughs> but, like, you had to just sit it on top of there and hope it don't fall off. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but that's that's it. That's it. We just chopped it up on camera. I didn't yeah. have a game plan. I'm like, yo, you wanna you wanna get on some some podcast type stuff. So uh, thank you for doing this. I Bro, appreciate. it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Man. Uh, Sonny's in the building once again. I'll probably see you. Probably see you in uh in a in a couple months at another function. For sure. But uh, Philly's in the building. Shout out to Philly. Uh, shout out to Sonny. shout out North Philly. Shout out to North Philly. Yes, um, sir. Shout out to Beanie Siegel. Sorry, one more because I rock with Beanie. <laughs> I, I I rock with Beans, the Broad Street Bully. We out of here. Cool Hand Podcast. Easy. <laughs>